I've built a recommendation engine before as part of a large organization and worked through all types of engineers and accounted for different uh, parts of the problem. It's one of the ones I'm most happy with because ultimately I came up with a very simple solution that was easy to understand from all levels, from the executives to the engineers and developers. Ultimately, it was just as efficient as something really complex that I could have spent a lot more time on. Uh, back in the university, we have a problem that we wanted to predict algae blooms. Uh, this algae blooms could cause a uh, rise in toxicity of the water and could cause problems to the water treatment company. We couldn't like predict with our chemical engineering background, so we used artificial net neural networks to predict when these blooms will occur. So the water treatment companies could uh, better handle this problem. In Toronto, the public transit is operated by Toronto Transit Commission. We call them TTC. It's one of the largest transit authorities in, 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 in the region, in North America. And one day they contacted me and said, we have a problem. And I said, okay, what's the problem? I said, well, we have complaints data um, and we would like to analyze it and we need your help. I said, fine, I'll be very happy to help. So I said, um, how many complaints do you have? They said, a few. I said, how many? Maybe half a million. I said, well, let's, let's start working with it. So I got the data and I started analyzing it. So basically they have done a great job of uh, keeping the data, in some data in tabular format, other was unstructured data. And in that case, tabular data was when the complaint arrived, who received it, what was the type of the complaint, was it resolved, whose fault was it. And the unstructured part of it was the exchange of emails and faxes. So imagine uh, looking at how, um, half a million exchanges of emails and trying to get some answer from it. So I started working with it and I, I, the first thing I wanted to know is why would people complain and is there a pattern, is, are there some days where there are more complaints than others? And I looked at the data and I analyzed it in all different formats and I couldn't find uh, what the, the impetus for uh, complaints being higher on a certain day and lower on others. And it continued for, for maybe a month or so and then one day I was getting off the, the, the bus in, in Toronto and, and I was still thinking about it and I stepped out without looking at the, on the ground and I, I stepped into a puddle, puddle of water and now I was sort of ankle deep into water and it was just one foot wet and the other dry and I was extremely annoyed. And I was walking back and I, then it hit me and I said, well, wait a second, um, today it rained unexpectedly and I wasn't prepared for it. That's why I'm wet and I wasn't looking for it. What, is, what if there is a relationship between um, extreme weather and the type of complaints TTC receives? So I went to the Environment Canada's website and I got data on rain and precipitation, um, wind and, um, and, and, and the like. And there I found something very interesting. The 10 most excessive days for complaints, the 10 days where people complained the most were the days when the weather was bad. It was, it was unexpected rain, an extreme drop in temperature, too much snow, very windy day. So I went back to the TTC's um, uh, executives and I said, I've got good news and bad news. And so good news is I know why people would complain excessively on certain days. I know the reason for it. The bad news is there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> <laughs>